Trump always called him Britain Trump. Um, is he? What was? Are there great parallels? Well, there are. You know, there as always with these things, there are and there aren't. I mean, the there aren't in the sense that uh, he's just given a resignation speech today without threatening to unleash a violent mob Yet. to ensure <laughs> his his own. Uh, I think even he would not cross that line. Um, you know, there the. the um, there was definitely, you know, a, a vein of racist prejudice that ran through Boris Johnson's writings about, you know, Muslims, black women, or black people, Muslim women, and so on. Uh, and you can point to those in the writings. I don't think he weaponized race uh, in the way that um, Donald Trump did. Um, but the things that are in common. Uh, and we saw them even today, actually, is this populist contempt for rules, for conventions, for democratic norms, for the rule of law, mm. this claim that he speaks and embodies the will of the people, that his critics are somehow uh, against the will of the people, uh, despite a, a, a super privileged background himself, offering himself as a tribune of the, of the masses against the elite. I mean, in Boris Johnson's case, it's such nerve it's such a cheek uh, to pose that way when you know he is an absolutely a child of the establishment and the elite but nevertheless that's the appeal and the central thing the defining thing is this uh, disregard contempt actually for truth and that is what made them twins across the atlantic it is what Bo um, donald trump saw i think it's why he saw uh, boris johnson as something of a kindred spirit because they both had that, that willingness to just lie and lie and lie and not even, you know, break stride while doing it. I mean, just to say whatever was helpful for that minute, even if it was untrue. And it is proven to be Boris Johnson's undoing. I mean, it isn't just that he appointed a man um, serially accused of sexual misconduct as his deputy chief whip. It's that he lied about his claim uh, of ignorance of that record, claim not to have been specifically mm. told when he had. And, um, you know, that part, the, the, this, of course, I think would have been survivable had it not been for Partygate before and Partygate turned again on lies. It was the deception, the lying that did it. And that is what the two of them absolutely have in common. I, I, I think we have to be slightly careful there. Um, uh, I, I don't regard Boris Johnson as not Donald Trump. Um, uh, the lies that he told were what I would like to call procedural lies. Um, they were, as someone said, the, the, the ability to say half the truth and keep your fingers crossed behind your back, uh, as against uh, Donald Trump's monumental lies, um, uh, and, and I mean, by the thousand. Boris, it seems to me, is, is a slightly different phenomenon. Uh, he's, he's a bit like, um, so he, he's, a, he's a tough liar. Uh, the lies aren't desperately important. Um, they're somehow unavoidable, and he always thinks he can get away with them. But, but um, I don't think it's the lies that undid him, really. I think it's, it's the sort of triviality and undoubtedly the sleaze which, which really undid him. Uh, the feeling that he was in office to look after his friends, um, to, 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 to reward his allies, uh, to disregard ability, to disregard competence, a general feeling that he was, he was lowering the dignity of his office. Uh, and I think that that is what really undid him. I mean, people fasten on the lies because the lies are fact. <laughs> Um, these other things are much more nuances of office. Um, and I do think, I do think, because I think it's now is a moment we might at least be a little charitable. Um, I do think that the, the, the charm, the ability to persuade people that he's a good chap, even if he isn't, um, the fact that wherever Boris went, people tended to smile, uh, they cheered up a bit. Um, he, he's given politics a sort of a lesson in lift, which very, very few politicians in Britain, although many abroad do. And it's the populist in him. Uh, I don't think populism as such is an evil thing. It's an evil thing when it's abused. But I do think he showed us um, that popularity in a po politician um, is, is a matter of personality and style. Uh, and it did, did, did deliver for him for, for, say, for three years. So he, he, this is why Guardian readers do delight in our paper, because Guardian <laughs> writers often see the world very, very differently. Um, I, re I do disagree quite strongly with all of that. I mean, <laughs> partly because I think it's a, um, Sam makes a really interesting point about charisma and, and, and appeal. And I absolutely agree with him that he had that, uh, Boris Johnson, by the bucket load. That people will come take away from this anything positive about that. I think the opposite will happen. I think people will... Uh, 
run a mile from the idea of, I, I don't think voters, by the way, but I mean, other po po politicians and others will think this is not a model to follow um, because he will be a warning. Uh, he'll be a cautionary tale about the power of the charismatic leader. Yes, people will say this guy can crack a joke or this woman can deliver a good speech, but look where that got us last time. You know, um, he was, because Boris Johnson was, that was all he was. He was all performance, all shtick, all charisma. Um, it will be a warning. Don't be fooled again by that because even with a, I mean, th let's just think on this. Even with an 80 seat majority, He's unraveled, and the government itself is 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 at breaking point. Well, um, that's an amazing thing to do, and that's because of, in a way, that that all he had was performance and shallowness. So I think he's 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 going to serve as an advertisement against those that suite of political skills. I would also say just something about populism. I mean, I think this idea that he's a tough liar is, in a way, what helps him, and it's a very British thing, which is we don't realise when someone is a kind of Victor uh, Orban yeah. figure or a Donald Trump figure because they sound and look like one of the good, one of the chaps. And he had that Eton accent. And so it, we didn't think, we couldn't think of him as a sinister sort of Bolsonaro type figure or whatever. But it was a mistake because there were big lies there. And I would say too, one is I think Brexit is a project founded on big lies, the lie that 350 million on the side of the bus, but also that we could stop trading in a free trade area with our closest neighbours and it would somehow make us richer, massive lie. But also the party gate wasn't about the bits and pieces about partying. It was about saying to people, these are the rules, we're all following them. These are life and death rules that will deprive you of contact with your loved one. And I'm laughing behind my hand because I'm not keeping them at all. That's There's nothing tough about that lie or, or gentle about that lie. That was a really, deep attack, I think, on, on how people lived and made really grave decisions where they said, I'm not going to bid farewell to my dying father or mother because the rules don't let me. And they are now, two years later, and they will for years, forever, think I was a fool because of what that man was doing. So I think they're serious to lies, the Boris Johnson lies. Uh, you know, they're, they're different from the Donald Trump lies not as serious as overturning a democratic election, but pretty but it, grave. 